Hi, everybody. Sorry about the technical difficulties. I had been planning to do this on Instagram Live um, because the image quality on my phone is much better. But Instagram Live seems to not wish to connect to the internet at the moment. So I'm improvising. I'm going to do this directly through, through YouTube. Um, so thank you for being with me. I'm excited to see you all here today. Let me just pull my chair up since I had it set up a bit differently. Get over here and that will work just fine. So I hope everyone is doing well. Sorry about these lights there too. Let's see if that's a bit better. <sighs> okay, after 10 minutes of running around figuring that out, we're here, it's good. So welcome, this is part of the Stimola Live uh, event series that Stimola Literary has put together to help get everybody connected uh, in these times when we're all physically apart and I'm so happy to be a part of it. Um, so let me take a minute to introduce myself before we get started. My name is Britt Crow Miller. Uh, I wear many hats. I am a professor and a senior sustainability scientist um, at Arizona State University. And for the little kids, that means that I'm a teacher for big kids and for grown-ups, which is a really fun part of the work that I do. Um, I'm an environmental geographer uh, by training. So I think a lot about the environment and how people interact with it. Um, I'm also the founding director of City Wild, which is a nonprofit organization based in Portland, Oregon. And we are all about um, finding ways for kids, uh, especially kids in cities, to be curious about nature, to connect with nature, um, and making sure that they have the chance to do that. Um, and then I'm also a parent. I have three young kids, and my kids are always making sure that I am seeing the nature around me and connecting with nature. And even in these times when we're here kind of stuck in our houses like you guys are too, um, we're still finding ways to do that. So we found some really interesting dead bugs in the windowsills that we've asked questions about and gotten curious about. We've um, we've heard some new bird calls out our window and we've asked questions about, about those critters as well. So I hope that you all are finding time and finding ways to connect with nature and ask questions and get curious um, during these times, even if it's a little bit more challenging um, than it normally is. So I am also a writer, which is why we are all here today. Um, and I am going to share with you a story. The story is called My Name is Mountain. And for the adults out there, the story is inspired by the early American ecologist, Aldo Leopold. Um, he has a famous essay called Thinking Like a Mountain. And it's really about um, the perspective of the mountain, the wisdom of a mountain that gets to exist for thousands and thousands and thousands of years and observe all of the long-term ecological interconnections um, that exist amongst the many animals and, and biomes um, and systems that exist as part of that part of that natural mountain system. So if you're interested in that, you can Google it. Um, the essay will come up. It's really interesting. Um, and you'll you'll see where the inspiration for this story came from. So the story is called My Name is Mountain. It it is a picture book. It does not yet have pictures. I am not an illustrator. So I actually think this is quite special because it means that for each of you listening, you get to create your own pictures in your mind. So you get to uh, close your eyes if you wish um, and really uh, imagine the scenery that I'm describing. And so the book will look different uh, for everyone. And I think that's great. So get comfortable. You can close your eyes if you want. Um, when we are done, when I'm done reading the story, I'll guide you through some yoga poses that are inspired um, by the text. So I hope you'll stick around for that. But here is the story. You're actually the first to hear it. So, my name is Mountain. My name is Mountain. Come, take a walk with me. We'll start where the flat fields of wildflowers creep into my foothills. The big leaf maples and white oaks grow tall and sturdy, standing shoulder to shoulder like friends. 
Calm, quiet garter snakes slither about, looking for a patch of sun, while a flock of noisy Stellar's jays sing to each other in the bramble. Skrika, skrika. Watch how they play, chasing and diving. We are here to observe. Come along this way. The ferns sprawl in groves, some delicate and lacy, others strong and sword-like. With prehistoric ancestors, they spread by wind-swept spores. Whoosh woo, whoosh woo. Their fiddleheads unfurl into fronds. Watch where you step. A yellow spotted millipede scuttles across my rich carpet of compost, munching as she goes. Slimy banana slugs and banded wood snails inch forward, slow and steady on their muscular feet. Go ahead, reach down and trace their trails. Sticky silver records of moments past. There is much to be learned from this kind of history. Come along, the trail turns steep here, winding up, up, up to a forest of giants. Cone-bearing families of firs, hemlocks, and thick-barked cedars send their roots down, down, down into ancient soil. They stretch their branches skyward. Listen, the great horned owl calls out from high in the canopy. Hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo. The black-backed woodpecker drills for his meal. Rizz, rizz. Do you need a rest? Have a seat on this bulging wayward root. There's no rush. Time is different here with me, here on the mountain. Ready? Come along. At the base of my giants grows a rainbow. Nurse logs rot into wet, earthy tones of red, black, and brown, a universe for countless insects to explore. Lift off the soft lid of bark. Do you see them? Wriggling young earthworms, a spindly-legged spider, the tiniest of mushrooms. Curiosity is rewarded with wonder. But come along, let's keep going. Over here, vine maples reach toward the sun, dripping with lichens in a thousand shades of green. Bleeding hearts bloom in a medley of purples, while flaming orange salmon berries make a tasty treat for the hungry black bear cubs. Munchk, munchk, munchk. Keep your distance. Don't startle their mama. The wild was hers before you came for your peace. Come along, we're getting close. Above my forest, the meadow unfolds, a grassy wonderland full of life. Mule deer zig and zag, a maze of trails across rocky slopes, nibbling on shrubs where juicy hoppers crouch to hide. Chit, chit, field mice scurry through the brush, chasing after hoppers as the keen-eyed kestrel tracks them from above. Can you smell the gray wolf nearby? A pungent mist, mix of must and rain and spirit? A fierce green fire burns in her eyes as she stalks the deer to feed her pups. Quick, let's go. Her fire is not ours to snuff. Come along, we're nearly there. Just past my meadow burbles a quick running stream. Susser, susser, susser. Salmon and trout glide through its waters, depositing their eggs in gravelly riffles, generation after generation. Crayfish, scuds, and caddisfly larvae snuggle beneath heavy, glimmering hunks of sunken granite. Slow down, breathe deeply on the soft, mossy bank. Go ahead, dip your toes in the water. Isn't it chilly? The stream comes from up there. See the glacier? It swells and shrinks with cycles of melt. But these days, those cycles are struggling. Come along, we're here. Come see the view. From where I sit, I can see everything. I see the wind patiently carving its story into my ridges as it has for ages. I see the snow melt tumble through my canyons in wet white ribbons, feeding the hidden web of roots that holds me together decade after decade, century after century. I see each woody tree trunk grow thicker, rainfall by rainfall, ring by ring. I see each season come and go, one passing into the next, next, next. From where I sit, the world stretches from before yesterday and beyond tomorrow. From where I sit, every plant and bug and animal has a role to play, even you. My name is Mountain. Come, take a walk with me. Come, open your eyes and think like me. 
So that's My Name is Mountain. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to conjure up some of those pictures in your mind. And I hope that someday soon you'll be able to see it as a book with, uh, with illustrations uh, that we can all see together. So now we can go through some yoga poses. Let me set this down. I'm going to move my chair out of the way. There we go. Now, if you have a yoga mat, that's great. If you don't, that's no problem. You can just do it on the floor or on a rug or on your carpet. So um, the poses that we'll be doing will come from our story. We're going to start at the bottom of the mountain and work our way up. So why don't we start by sitting down can cross our legs, have our hands on our knees, and we can breathe in a couple of times in through our nose, filling your lungs, and then out through your mouth. You can make the sound of the wind if you want when you blow out. Feel your body calming down. And then instead of namaste, which is kind of the traditional opening for yoga practice, I thought we could start with these, word, these words. So I'll say them, and if you feel comfortable, you can repeat them after me. If you're not comfortable, then you can just listen. I am strong. I am brave. I am love. See if you can carry those thoughts with you as we do our yoga together. So we'll start by greeting the sun. Let's imagine that we're outside together. It's warm, it's springtime, the air is fresh, and you can feel the warmth of the sun on your skin. So let's sweep our arms up toward that sun, look up at the sun, and then bring your arms down to your heart. A few more times up to the sun. Hello, sun. Down to your heart. One more time, reaching up to the sun and down to your heart. So now we're at the base of our mountain and there's a beautiful field of wildflowers that's blooming all around us. And so you can imagine different colors of flowers. You can see pink and red white. So let's bloom with our flower pose. So the first thing you need to do is lift your feet up off the ground and take your arms and kind of hook your elbows under your legs like this and then bring your, your pointer finger and your thumbs together and imagine that you are a flower here in our flower pose. You're one of the flowers out in the field of wildflowers at the base of our mountain. And feel the nice stretch. I feel a stretch in my shoulders. I don't know where you feel a stretch, but you can be whatever kind of flower you want. We'll just stay here for a minute as a flower. Maybe there are some bees buzzing around or dragonflies or other pollinators coming by for a little snack. Okay, so come out of our flower. Now imagine that hiding in our field of blooming wildflowers and in the tall grass is a friendly garter snake. I don't know how many of you have ever seen a garter snake. I've seen lots of garter snakes out hiking with my kids. They love garter snakes. They're actually completely harmless and they're a sign of a healthy ecosystem. So it's actually lucky if you see a garter snake. Okay, so let's roll onto our bellies. Let's be snakes together. Onto your belly, stretch your legs out behind you. You can point your toes and then Push your chest up off the ground. Sometimes this is called a cobra pose, but today we'll call it garter snake pose. So you are a snake in the grass. You can even make a snake sound, a friendly snake sound. And if you stick your tongue out like a snake, you're actually smelling the air. That's how snakes smell. They use their tongues to smell, which is pretty cool. So let's be a snake in the grass for a few more moments. That's pretty fun. Okay, now we're moving up the mountain and we're in the forest. We've come into the forest 
And on the shady forest floor around us is a slug. And slugs are great because they leave those slimy trails behind them so you can see where they've come from. And sometimes it looks like they've been having a dance party together, even if the slugs themselves are gone. So let's do our slug pose. So some of you know this as child's pose, but today it is called slug pose. So come down to your, uh, come to your knees, and then you can lean forward, reach your arms forward out in front of you, bring your head down to the floor, and imagine that you're a slimy, gooey slug with a soft body, with no bones at all, and just relax into the floor. You should really feel calm and relaxed in this pose. You can imagine that you're moving across the forest floor, leaving a little trail behind you. What if we had little trails behind us everywhere we went, that would be funny. Okay, let's come out of our slug pose. We're going to come slowly up to our feet. Here, I want you to imagine you're a little seed for a tree. And the seed is slowly growing taller. Now you're a little sapling. You're rising up to the sun until you've broken through the soil. Okay, so let's come into our tree pose. You can make sure your feet are firmly on the ground, about as wide as your, your hip bones, those pointy bones here in front of you. And you can imagine that there are little roots growing out of your toes and your heels, and the roots are growing down, down through your floor. If you're in an apartment building, they can grow through the floor, down to your neighbor's ceiling below you, or they can grow down through the floor into the soil below you, and they're really rooting you down into the earth firmly. And then we can take one leg, let's take our right leg up, you can bring it to your ankle like this, if that's easy for you. If you wanna bring it higher up, you can bring it higher up, and it helps to balance as a tree if you bring your, your arms here to the middle. And I like to look at something in front of me that's not moving. So I'm picking a tile on my floor. I'm going to focus on that. I'm going to be strong and tall like a tree. Take some breaths. If you're feeling really balanced, you can lift your arms up to make a crown, like the crown of the tree, like all the leaves coming out, reaching up to the sun. Or maybe you're a Douglas fir tree and you have a pointy top. You can't see my pointy top. I have a pointy top up there. Okay, now trees, let's come to the other side. Root your feet back down. Feel those roots growing out of your toes and your heels. Again, you can bring your foot to your ankle if you want, this kind of tree. Or you can bring your foot up a little bit higher. Balance here. Maybe this kind of tree. Maybe this kind of tree. Maybe a conifer tree with a point, like a Christmas tree. Okay. So we're in the forest. We're among the trees. We're surrounded by these tall, tall trees everywhere. And who do we hear but an owl? We hear that owl, that great horned owl from our story. So what sound does an owl make? Has anybody ever heard an owl? Different kinds of owls make different sounds, but the great horned owl makes this sound. Can you do that? Great. Okay, so let's be owls. Kneel, kneel down on your knees. You can tuck your toes behind you and then raise your arms up and then swoop like an owl. This is our owl pose. Swoop. Maybe we're looking for mice, looking for a little snack in the grass. It's probably nighttime because we're nocturnal, right? That means we come out at night, we're, we're active at nighttime. Okay, now our owl bellies are full. I think I have some owls on my shirt here somewhere. Our owl bellies are full and we're going back to our, our hides um, to sleep for the daytime. But we're still heading, you and, you and I, we're still heading up the mountain. So we've come now to an alpine meadow. We're almost to the top of the mountain. 
and the meadow is full of grass. So let's be tall blades of grass and we'll sway this way and then the wind will blow us this way. And then we'll sway back this way again. We'll let the wind blow us one more time. It's really nice to sway like grass. Okay, and who's in the grass? But a grasshopper. Grasshoppers are really, really cool. I saw one in my garden last week and it was very exciting. So we'll stand with our feet apart. And we'll squat down. And we'll be grasshoppers. Can do a couple jumps. My daughter told me that this is actually the frog pose, but I've never seen a frog in an alpine meadow. There could be some, I suppose, but today we're jumping like grasshoppers. So let's do one more jump. Okay, we're at the edge of the meadow and we spot the mama wolf from our story with the fierce green fire burning in her eyes. She's looking for food. So let's come to our knees, have your palms out on the floor in front of you. So you're kind of like, like a sitting wolf like this. And we're pressing our hands down. You can tilt your head back and you can even howl like a wolf if you want. Oh! And stretch, stretch, stretch. Oh! I bet your wolf howl. Howl sounds better than mine. You could pretend that downward facing dog is a wolf pose, but I've never seen a wolf make that pose before. <laughs> so finally, we've passed the rushing stream next to the meadow that's coming down from the glacier up at the top of the mountain. We've reached the top of the mountain. So we're going to do our final pose together. It's mountain pose. It's one of the most important poses in yoga, even though it seems very simple and it is. And it's something that can help us feel calm and balanced and grounded. So if you are ever feeling nervous or anxious or just a little out of sorts, you can come into your mountain pose and take some deep, deep breaths. I bet you'll feel a little bit better. That applies to children and grown-ups. You know, I enjoy mountain pose. Um, so stand up, have your feet again, kind of as wide as your, as your hips. Root them down, have a tall spine. You can let your arms out with your palms facing outward. Bring your fingers apart. Take a few deep breaths. In through your nose and out through your mouth. And just let yourself feel grounded and strong and powerful and wise like the mountain. Okay, so to end, let's sit down again. Close your eyes. And if you want to repeat after me, you can, but you don't have to. I am strong. I am brave. I am loved. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you'll carry the feeling of the mountain uh, and the story of My Name is Mountain with you for the rest of the day and come back to it anytime you wanna feel more grounded or calmer um, or more connected. Um, I would be thrilled to share the story with you uh, when it has pictures and when it's a book someday soon, hopefully. Um, so thanks again for joining me. Um, take care, have a good rest of your day.